COVID cases starting to shoot back up the past few weeks. Onondaga, Oswego, Jefferson counties all now in high transmission zones, according to the CDC, which in that case recommends masks indoors in those counties. CNY leading the state in cases per 100,000. That's a real measure of transmission. Joining us now to go even deeper into how much COVID is circulating, we welcome back epidemiologist Dave Larson from SU. Dave, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, so whether you look at the, the case numbers by the county, the state data uh, for the region, CDC, whatever you want to go by, look at all of them, uh, COVID's up. How close are those numbers that we're seeing to a true representation of how much COVID is actually circulating out there? It's a good question. Um, the case data we have has a lot of variability in it in terms of treatment seeking behavior and symptoms and so if cases are going up it might be because our our population level immunity is waning mm -hmm. it might be because we're testing our kids more often with the start mm -hmm. of school and so these things really complicate the understanding we can derive from case data. You, you obviously also have to rely now on people reporting these things actually going to get tested uh, reporting a home test things like that wastewater you don't have to worry about any of that i think it really probably gives you the the truest uh measure what are the wastewater samples uh telling you from what you've been seeing yeah so the wastewater s surveillance shows a different story hmm. regionally since june our wastewater surveillance is down since july our wastewater sur wastewater levels are down in the region in onondaga county and so they have been declining while cases have been going up hmm. so what is what is what does that tell you then so it tells us we have, I get. So it tells us we have a difference in the two metrics, yes. and then what causes that difference? And there's a few possible explanations. We could, we could have some type of variant that is escaping detection. That that is a possibility. It's rare, um, less less likely, but there is also the possibility that people are testing their children more and reporting cases into schools. Um, and the and other infectious diseases are up and people are, might be wow. testing more for COVID. So I know a lot of people, there's a lot of rhinoviruses and, mm -hmm. and other things circulating right now. Um, so so what do we do then with, with the results? Because we seem like we have kind of a mixed bag of the, of, of the I'll call them the numbers and, and the wastewater. What do we kind of take away as far as, you know, our, our vigilance level uh, with COVID? So even though we say that the wastewater levels are lower than they were in June, they're still high, and they still put us into that high probability of encountering COVID in our day-to-day -day lives. And so we should take precautions um, based upon that. And then we also have high level of infectious disease, as, mm. as the case metrics show. And so we should, they both tell us the same story in terms of precautions we should take, mm -hmm. but just we're trying to trying to see if right now what we have is a little bit of a lull in transmission mm -hmm. and a blip in cases or if we might see a, a surge in transmission right now. So, so lower means just that doesn't mean low. It just means lower compared to what you were looking at uh, otherwise. Um, I, I know I ask you this each time we talk. Are, are you able to um, determine what we're looking at as far as variants in the wastewater or do you simply say like it's COVID or it's not COVID? Almost. Oh. Almost. We've been we've been working on this for for a few months now and um, it's it's actually the logistics and lining it up it's not the science mm -hmm. and that is forthcoming so gotcha. I won't I won't give you a definite yeah. date but okay. it will be here oh that'll be important um what else are you seeing because I'm sure you, you don't just notice or, or look for that what else do you you see in the wastewater um, that's circulating in our community Yes, we've supported the polio um, response mm -hmm. downstate, not here in okay. Onondaga County. Uh, that we haven't tested for polio in Onondaga County yet, and and we hope to do that uh, one of those things in the future. Um, and then we've been looking at monkeypox for a little bit as well. And and around the around the country, they've been looking at monkeypox in wastewater. Should we use it or not? The jury's still out whether it's sensitive enough for monkeypox. Mm. And then other groups are showing this is very useful for RSV. Okay. It's a virus, a respiratory virus that, that hospitalizes thousands of, of young babies every year. And then um, influenza as well. Who, um, maybe I have time, I'm gonna sneak one more in on, on you. Um, who uses this data that you're collecting, whether it's the monkeypox, the polio, the COVID, whatever, whatever it is, who uses that and how do they use it? So we hope to, we hope we, we do publish our data publicly, and so we, we hope that the public has access to that, um, and they do have access to that, so they can access that and use it for themselves and their own decisions. Every week, we send the county level data back to the county health department and the wastewater treatment plants, and so okay. the counties can use the decisions. Mm -hmm. They've they've sent out public health advisories. They've they've 
done press stories around mm -hmm. it. And then we also send a, a, a weekly report to the state on the state level and they can make those decisions. Dave Larson, uh, can't thank you enough for joining us. Really helps us get a true picture of uh, especially COVID, but other things in our, in our wastewater. Thanks so much for joining us again. Yeah, thank you, Jeff.